Hi, I'm Asian Television Award-winning host Ollie Pettigrew. And hi, I am the under 13 girls bowling champion. I'm Brad. And you're watching EPAD, literally the only show that I shot in 2012 that wasn't nominated for some kind of Asian Television Award. That's actually true. It is, yeah. weirdly so. Andale, muchacho, estito Emilio Estevez. Ah, es this muy bueno. El de semana de Andre 3000 es una maravilla de la Chávez y Chávez. Eso qué pasada lens. Sí. Profugas. The only thing that won't go away. There is a cream for profugas, though. It was preparation H, I believe. Yes. You just liberally apply it. With a spatula. <laughs> you want me to kill you right here? You're a viper. Let go of her, Moreno. <laughs> Let her go, Moreno. Stop that. This isn't a game. Don't play with that, Irma. Now, some of the more eagle-eyed viewers among you may have noticed there's something slightly different about EPAD this month. I got this new watch. That's what it is. Really? What watch is it, Brad? This is a limited edition Wu-Tang Clan watch that they only made 250 of, and I'm very proud of it. How much on eBay did you pay for that? Way more than I should have. <laughs> and there we go. Uh, no, you may have also noticed that it may be slightly a little bit more basketball-y than usual here on EPAD. That's because it is February, and as we all know, February is the month of the Blue Oyster Club's uh, early discount. Also, Valentine's Day month, guys and girls. Why did I say guys? Oh my goodness, what have I done? I said girls. Okay. Um, so, but of course, being Valentine's Day, this is EPAD, where we're not exactly into the whole, like, when Harry met Sally. Traditional sort of Valentine's Day. You movies. got mail. <laughs> what? So, um, what we like to do is things that invi either involve um, stabbing. Smile for me now, brother. <laughs> uh, shooting. Explosions. Uh, being thrown through a window. Being kicked in the face. <laughs> Breaking necks. <laughs> Unnecessary explosion. Screams at the camera. Ah! Things like that. So in that vein, that's basically the route we're going to be taking this month here on EPAD. Start things off. Real romantic Valentine sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, the kind of thing that makes a girl go, ah! And hug you. See how I said girl that time? Well done. So this movie is called Glass House. Wow, sounds scary. Yeah. Some guy that grows flowers. And that's, we all know that's like crazy people. Oh. People that talk to their flowers are weird, right? Actually, uh, our intern typed that in wrong. She pronounces it wrong. It's actually grass house. It's the grass house. It's, no, no, it, it, it is the glass house. It's, Wait. is it glass or grass? Can you say it? What's the name of this movie? What? Glass house. Oh, 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 it has an I'm L. I'm really not sure it's, what she said. I'm, I'm confused. Well, I heard noises. I thought it was a burglar or a coyote. I'm not used to having kids in the house. Come on. Thank you. Got me freezing. No more 3 a.m. swims, okay? With all the glass, you can hear everything. All right, so you know how we always show straight to DVD sequel? Oh, am I looking good? Yeah. Cool. We show a straight to DVD sequel of some sort, and we always Every say, time. yeah, we always say, well, this movie's terrible, but it's a follow up to uh, one that was okay. Yeah, but, but we don't have that yeah, one. But, but what we that. do have is the one with B stars in it. Yeah. We have the original one and now the sequel, because we have a sequel to The Glass House called The Glass House, The Good Mother. Two things. Mm -hmm. First of all, The Glass House was good enough to get a sequel. I didn't
didn't want to get into the details of it all, <laughs> but apparently so. And secondly, it's got a colon. Yes, it does. I know you like that. <laughs> That's not a great joke to make when I'm dressed like this. You rode here on the back of a Harley, <laughs> strapped to a big burly man dressed like that, and you say you like colon. Look, don't call yourself a big burly man, OK? We had to. It's better, and it's quicker to get here on a bike. And it was a scooter. Oh, right, <laughs> it was a Vespa. OK, so this movie, um, <clears throat> The Glass House, The Good Mother, is about something. It's about a house made of glass and a mother who's good. She's a, was she just like an exhibitionist? Yes. She just likes to just change and be seen. No curtains in this house whatsoever. Yeah. It's just the glass house. Yeah, I like videos like that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. What are you doing out of bed, Abby? I don't feel well. What did you give me? I can make you some eggs. No. Toast? No. You have to eat something. Oh. Ben Koch called yesterday when I told him about your condition. Ye yesterday I was fine. No, Abby, you've been in bed for three days. Anyway, uh, so you know what this episode of EPAD needs more? Leather. More colons! Uh, another one? Yes. Well, this one's not a sequel, though. This one confuses me, because this is one of a few movies over the next few weeks, actually, that have famous people in that I've never heard of. I've never heard of this movie. It's got Ellen Barkin in. She's from Ocean's 13, but she's also from, like, you know, other movies and stuff. She's a bit of a milf. Yeah, and I don't have to worry about getting pregnant anymore, either. Um, it's got, quite peculiarly, I think it's got Zach Galifianakis in it. It does have Zach Galifianakis in it. And Maggie Q. Maggie Q. Now, you know how you think Maggie Q is really hot? And you know how you think Zach Galifianakis is really funny? Yeah. Those two things go well together. Yeah. Now I want you to think of them making a baby. I feel like I might have made a bad career choice. That's one very hairy, small, Asian dude. Mm-hmm. You know, that really hurts my feeling when you say stuff like that. It's like, it's like Daniel Wu but with a massive beard. Daniel Wu that could grow facial hair. Yeah, not that he can. <laughs> Let's face it, he can't. He can't. No way. Let's be honest, he can't. Um, yeah, so this is called Operation Endgame. So this, uh, this next movie, I was reading about in the cab on the way here. I was reading the script. Um, kind of hung over out of one bloodshot eye while weeping about my general sadness in life. <laughs> and I got very confused because I saw the title was Hollywood Homicide. Mm -hmm. Then I read the synopsis from our famed director, Nick. And it talks about uh, a movie based on the Beltway sniper attacks in 2002. Which sounds suspiciously like DC Sniper, the okay. movie we showed a few weeks ago. Yeah. So, now, granted, my hungover state, mm -hmm. I actually, for a moment, went, I didn't know that guy was from Hollywood. They made another movie about this, but they called it Hollywood Homicide? Yeah, and then I snapped out of reality and went, oh, Nick just half-assed it and cut and pasted <laughs> stuff, and so, yeah. Hey, it's close enough, close enough. So basically, this is how close Nick got. One movie is a based on reality about a sniper in Washington, D.C. Which is over there. Yeah. And the movie that we're actually showing is based in Hollywood. Which is over there. Uh, is kind of a comedy, and it stars Josh Hartnett and Harrison Ford. Right. Close. So close. But not really. It's kind of like sort of putting the synopsis for Independence Day with Gone with the Wind. It's like, frankly, aliens, I don't give a damn. Busy. Okay, he's oming. There are some discrepancies with your income and your spending. You mean like I'm spending more than I'm making? Is that news? Keep talking. I think he's centering, he's finding his center. Devlin. What the, f what is this? 
Get him off the phone. Guys? Javelin. Cleo. Police business. Joe? I can't talk to you. I'll call you back later, all right? Javelin. That's really hard. I'm, his position, his position looks really hard. He's not, he's not even talking, is he? To do. A tree? Now he's a tree? This is a setup. And it will not hold up. And I'm sure Joe Gavilan is next door right now, maintaining complete professional integrity. And you know it! Well, there you go. Turns out it was actually Hollywood Homicide and oh. not that randomly depressing movie, thank no, goodness. Not at all. It's very different from uh, what we thought it was going to be. Indeed. Well, what we did notice, though, is that this being Hollywood Homicide, um, being that movie that's not about snipers, it's set in Hollywood. And there's a whole bunch of people that you can kind of look out for in this movie who were famous and were then not, or have a whole sort of like momentary sort of fame that got them in this movie because their agents were like, hey man, this is it. Get in this movie and you'll be huge. And then it kind of won. If we only had a list or something, because I really didn't pay attention to the movie. I didn't really pay attention to anything I just said either. But apparently there's a list, and that was the closest segue that I could make to it. This first guy, who is he? I, I haven't a clue. Corrupt. It's corrupt with a K. It's, so wait, it's spelt wrong. Yeah, I think this is the uh, ancient philosopher Corrupt, who yeah. I've read many of his quotes. Ah, uh, yes, and yay, Corrupt did say. It don't look like no police station. Next up. You do know who this is, but it's going to confuse you, right? Yeah, uh, I had to figure it out. Andre Benjamin, Yeah. right? And everyone's like, I know that name. Yeah. Why don't I know that name? It's Andre 3000. Yeah, from, from Outcast, which is spelt with a K. Yeah. I'm starting to sense a trend here. Wait, is that the guy who shakes it like a Polaroid picture? Yeah. Shake it. Shake, shake it. it. OK, like don't it. say that either, wearing that. Next up is, um, well, oh, you know this guy. Master P. Kiss my That's yeah. P. Diddy's father. <laughs> you know how many Air Jordan 6 black kids wear? Uh, also, his brother, Bait. But we won't get into him. Yeah. Not dressed like this. You're five zippers away from Thriller. Oh, and you're one shirt away from Carlton, mother uh, Gladys Knight is in this movie, quite how, randomly. How random is that? Isn't she 800 years old? Yeah. Where Didn't she pitch? die in 1873? That's life. And then finally, our favorite actor of all time, the guy that won the Best Hair Award yep. between 1986 and 1992. Chavez e Chavez. Himself, that's right. Lou Diamond Phillips is in this movie. Does he have a knife? I'm not sure. Let's figure it out. I'm the bait. Oh, you look good. Well, it never hurts to get a compliment, but that's not why I was shaking my booty at you. Uh, anyway, this next movie is a comedy in the vein of Airplane. <laughs> Naked Gun. <laughs> Scary movie. Yeah, those sort of slapstick, in your face. Spoof movies. Yeah. <sighs> right, which pastiche movies, before they became crap, as they all now are. Overdone. Exactly. And they're just lazy. They take like three minutes to, to write them, two days to shoot them. This one really accurately pastiches all the teen movies that came out in the 90s and early thousands yeah. that we watched when we were at the end of our teens. And it was kind of a first of its kind to yeah. really go after a bunch of different movies. It went, it, it was, was just bang, 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 all one very, after the Very, very funny. You watched it and you paid attention because it was so fast. It was, and it's like, and it, it like it nails it. Like, it's like, they've got the character who's the, the pretty ugly girl. You know yes. what I mean? She's the ugly girl that, oh, three minutes of doing her hair, yeah. suddenly she's the most popular girl in school. I'm confident all of a sudden. <laughs> and the, the sensitive jock. But that, the sensitive jock being, that's Captain America. <laughs> Exactly. It is Chris Evans in his first movie role. He's actually really funny in this. You can see. I don't like Sundays. Oh, it's not a Sunday. It's a banana split. And um, you're one of your favorite Poison Ivies is in this movie as well. The thing with her role in this movie is she plays like the angry, kind of snobby cheerleader type. Yeah. Jamie Presley. Jamie Presley does it for me in this movie. Jamie Presley always did it for me. She still does yeah, do it for me. But the angry cheerleader thing is a thing for me. I, 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 I want to feel like I'm not good enough. God. Hot cheerleader. You want to be disrespected by her. Yeah. Maybe, Defiled. maybe spit on a little bit. Look, 
You may have lost those glasses and that ponytail thing you do, but to everyone that matters, you're still a loser. Oh. Oopsie! <laughs> Look at that. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh. You're not gonna cry now, are you? This velvet? <laughs> what is this velvet? What is my nipple, actually? <laughs> um, basically, I'm in a moment right now where I feel like I could just get beamed up out of here and then into a whole other place. Oh, God. Yes, that's right. Oh, okay. I'm segueing to Star Trek. Okay. It's good. It's legitimately good. It's got the book in it. And then, like, John Luke Picard shouts at things and shoots people with a machine gun and goes, no! And then he goes, no! And gets all like, like a three year old. It's good. You'll like it. There's, and there's loads of topless women in it. Really? No. <laughs> Are you familiar with physical forms of pleasure? If you are referring to. Sexuality. I am fully functional, programmed in multiple techniques. How long has it been since you've used them? Eight years, seven months, 16 days, four minutes, 22. Far too long. It's episode 200, we forgot, by the way. Um, so, as a gift to you, from me, um, we have. I'm not even faking you out. It's not a clip of Top Gun. It's not clips from Days of Thunder. It's Drew Barrymore dancing in Poison Ivy. For real? No, for real. Let's see. I think I'm just gonna just gonna leave Brad and Drew all alone. So enjoy this. I'll be I'll be back in a minute. Somebody get some ice. <laughs> it's okay. This way, it, it's good. Help. I can't reach it. The script go comes in useful for something. <laughs> <laughs> we finally used Nick's script. <laughs> Episode 200, the first time we ever used Nick's script. Okay, thanks for the help, Brad. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs>